This is Physics uh, 123 Lab Lecture. This is the second lecture uh, for the day of August 25, 2020. Uh, this lecture is completely optional. I'm going to give you my philosophical understanding of the science. Uh, just to make you interested, uh, you'll become acquainted with me. Uh, so if you don't have the time, you don't have 10 minutes to spare, then you don't have to watch this. So let's start with, uh, I think physics is different than the other sciences in the sense that I think physics probably focuses on energy the most, and uh, energy is sort of always implied in everything you do. Um, so the concept of energy, I think, is kind of what set physics apart. That's my opinion. Uh, I'm, speaking on my, I'm speaking on my behalf, no other scientist, no other engineer. My background is engineering. So you probably think of science as being separate from religion and politics because religion and politics is full of controversy and uncertainty and speculation and people are arguing, you can't agree, you can't prove anything, you can't disprove anything. And, sci and science is completely different because you have observation and you can prove things. Well, I'm going to tell you that, in fact, that uh, science is just the same as politics and uh, religion. It's full of controversy it has a history of controversy. It presently is full of controversy. I don't see any way to avoid controversy. And I'll explain why. I believe that uh, science is based on three pillars. Assumption, observation, and intuition. Let's start with assumption. Now, uh, uh, scientists don't use the word assumption. They use the word axiom. Uh, what would be an example of an assumption? Well, I guess there are four forces in nature. Uh, there's an electromagnet, there's gravity, there's a weak, and there's strong. Okay, electromagnetic is something you see when you're doing electricity, light, uh, gravity, obviously you know what that is. Weak and strong are related to uh, atomic forces. So that's force, okay? Force. So, uh, has anyone ever proven any of these forces actually exist? Which one have they proven actually exists? Well, actually, none of them have been proven to exist because none of them have ever been observed. What do you mean they haven't been observed? Well, what you observe is actually an object falling and accelerating. You don't observe gravity. You're observing a cause. A cause... Well, how do you know there's something called a cause? Because you have an assumption that things are causal. They're caused by something. So actually, none of these forces can be directly observed. It is assumed that they are caused by a force. Causality, as opposed to coincidence. So every time you push somebody and they're next to a cliff and they fall down, you can't tell the judge, what was a coincidence? The person began to accelerate as my hand moved in that direction. They're going to say, no, I believe in causality and I believe in force. Well, you can't prove force. Okay, so assumption is always somewhere in science. Okay, let's go with intuition. What is intu scientific intuition? Remember how we were debating, should we wear masks or not? You know, COVID. So they were first saying, don't wear a mask, then do a wear, wear a mask. Well, a mask will, you know, block little particles of stuff coming, but, you know, no, it won't block a virus. Back and forth, back and forth. So there's no double-blind, uh, random uh, uh, research to prove that it works or it doesn't work. The same with the, uh, the prophylactic use of uh, hydrochloroquine. Uh, it's with zinc that's not been proven or disproven. There are, are observational studies that indicate it, can't, it doesn't work. Others indicate it does, but there's no double-blind so anyway, so people have intuition based on because it worked on SARS. Okay, other versions of SARS. So let's let's do a let's do an intuition. I'm going to do intuition versus observation here. I'm going to keep this in ten minutes or a little bit over. Okay, this is what is observed. This was observed. This is observed. This is what people believe. Some people, and some people believe this is not true. Physicists and scientists believe this. Some. Matter of fact, the department head believes this. One of the other physicists in the department thinks that's nonsense. Okay. What does this say? This says if you have a mass and you got a little bar magnet near it, and then you got these little lines of magnetic 
force going in real tight there and then they all come out here so they come out here very weak but there's a lot more area where they come out they come in here when they come in in right they're kind of going like this okay okay what it means is that whatever goes in equals whatever comes out now if this was a gravitational field a planet that wouldn't this wouldn't hold it wouldn't be equal zero so what is so in in plus out equals zero that's what this is essentially saying but intuition says that probably this is not true it's probably equal to this and that this is an extremely small value small small so therefore we haven't observed this yet we don't know how to observe it but we have reasons to believe that this is the case as a matter of fact science is very often had an intuition or a suspicion about something and then later on they were able to prove it but at the time when they first had this suspicion so intuition is very important in science right should you wear a mask should you wear a mask what drugs may or may not work because it worked on SARS before maybe it'll work on this version of COVID the blah 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 okay observation is what we what we now see but our measurements can be poor okay so this is what we as electrical engineers believe I don't use the word believe this is what we use right now we don't use this because every measurement has proven it to be zero let's say this number does turn out to be a really low number as an engineer I'll probably put the number zero in there so because engineers we don't care about the truth we care about something called significance if it's not large enough if it doesn't make a big enough difference or my customer or any human being is going to care then I pretend it doesn't exist so engineers the physicists are not caring about the same thing. Physicists are more looking for what they call the truth. As engineers, we're just looking for a nice model, a nice mathematical model that works. That's all we're looking for. So that's the difference between an engineer and a, and a, a physicist, in my opinion. Okay? Oh, well, let's give an example of another observation. So in the past, we've observed that the radio, radio decay of something is based on a, a radio constant. And then within the last 10 years, what have they discovered? They discovered that the neutrinos coming from the sun, in fact, change the rate of nuclear decay of isotopes. Now, what does that put into question? Now, that puts into question anything that has to do with radio dating of things that are very old. It also gives us a whole new understanding of, you know, uh, that there's causality, because it was assumed that radio decay was purely a coincidental event. There was nothing that guides it. It purely is spontaneous of its own. Now it goes back to the old causality argument. Uh, causality versus uh, coincidence. Uh, you've probably heard of Einstein and you've probably heard of Heisenberg. Heisenberg had an uncertainty principle. Uh, Einstein was kind of upset about that because uh, Einstein believes in causality. He'd make a great engineer. Uh, Heisenberg came up with this uh, ma mathematical formula that which we use in uh, as electrical engineers, uh, Schrodinger's equation and stuff like that. We use it. We use it. Although I do personally believe in causality in all things. I do personally think causality guides all things. So um, what happened was uh, my physics uh, fabrication teacher was so heartbroken. He said, you know, Einstein, all his contributions to science stopped because he was so stumbled by Heisenberg's principle of uncertainty and the formulation of it because, you know, Einstein doesn't believe God plays, uh, you know, with uh, dice and rolls things, you know, uh, God has rules in that. Um, you know, I probably could have helped Mr. Einstein at the time. I could have just told him, you know, Mr. Einstein, would you just relax? Think like an engineer. It's a model. It doesn't mean it's the truth. It'll give you some good answers. So we use that in electrical engineering when we want to figure out current flow and charge density and semiconductors because we are looking at a very large number of electrons and this uncertainty thing is really a statistical probability thing and it works really good when you got large numbers of things. If it was on an individual atom uh, or an individual electron, then it, 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 doesn't, you know, it doesn't help you out very much. So engineers are thinking of everything from the viewpoint of a model, it's a mathematical model, just give me a formula or a general equation and I can then work with it. I don't know if it's the truth, but it gives me answers that are good enough. A uh, physicist may actually believe this, or he might actually believe that to be the truth. So even if this is the truth, as an engineer, if that number is too small, I'm still going to put a zero in there. Let's see what else. Any other thing I might want to say? I'm trying to keep this extremely short. I can talk about a lot of other little topics. Um, okay. Basically, in science, then, it's a constantly evolving, and people are challenging each other all the time. 
Uh, people have not figured out things. People don't really know. People have, you know, an intuition. They make an observation. And they also interpret it based on their uh, assumptions. There's many other assumptions. I just use the, the word, the force assumption, that force exists, right? You're probably going to learn in physics, F equals MA. You're going to learn that formula. Is there really an F? Can you prove F? Are you in every place in the universe at every single time, and have you done this experiment every single time that the mass times the acceleration equal, you know, is a force? Does it, does, you know? So at some point you have to make an assumption that your, your thousands of times you did this, that this is a, this is a universal law. So you're still kind of making assumptions. Uh, that's about 11 minutes. I just hope that made science a little more interesting to you. And uh, I look forward to giving you some more lectures. And maybe I'll throw a few more things when we are doing our modeling for the problems. I'll show you how the models fall apart and why they're only useful to some point and then at some, another point they're, they're problematic. So uh, I hope you enjoy this semester and I enjoy uh, looking forward to teaching, teaching you everything I know. Physics 123, sections 1 and 2. Lab, uh, lab lecture, uh, second lab lecture on philosophical points. Uh, today's date was... August 25th, 2020.